Welcome to another edition of Credit Matters TV. I'm Richard Courtright, a Managing Director in the Corporate Ratings Group. The first set of mass-produced electric vehicles recently began to appear in showrooms in select parts of the country. Their manufacturers, most notably Nissan and Chevrolet, are touting the vehicle's performance, their safety, and their economy. One major electric research firm concluded that an average price of about 12 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the average price that Americans pay for their electricity, the co equals the cost of, elect of filling your car at a dollar a gallon of gasoline. So with gasoline highly unlikely ever to be near one dollar, the prospects for electric vehicles, at least on this one parameter, would appear quite positive. With me in the studio to discuss some of the ramifications of the arrival of electric vehicles is Ann Selting, a director in the Utilities and Infrastructure Practice. So Ann, perhaps you can elaborate a little bit on um, this one characteristic, the, the price, as well as highlight any other characteristics that might be particularly appealing to, uh, to the American consumer. Sure. I mean, currently there are two vehicles available, electric vehicles available widely in the U.S. market, and they were both introduced recently. You've got the Chevy Volt. It was introduced in January 2010. That's a plug-in electric vehicle. What that means is it runs on grid electricity, but it also has a small combustion engine. And then you have a pure electric vehicle. That's the Nissan Leaf. That was introduced about the same time, actually, in 2010, end of 2010, actually January, December 2010. And that runs on grid electricity. That's the only source of power. And when you look ahead at major auto manufacturers, many of them have plans for introducing some sort of electric vehicle in the next five years or so. Now, the value proposition, as you suggested, is squarely in the fuel costs of the cars. Um, on a per mile basis, it's much cheaper to operate an electric vehicle. Um, just a couple of, and that's true really at, at, at um, a range of gas prices and electric power prices. So you don't have to have a perfect um, lineup of high gas prices, low electric prices to justify that statement. And just to give you an example, making just a simple assumption, today gasoline is around $4. As you said, the average price of electricity nationally is $0.12. Cents. And then assume 2010, the average fuel efficiency of the pass U.S. passenger car on the road is 23 miles a gallon. Using those three statistics, here's how conventional, hybrid, and electric vehicle compares on uh, fuel prices. It's 18, 8, and 4. That means 18 cents per mile to operate the conventional vehicle, assuming 23 miles per gallon. 8 cents to, to operate the, a, a hybrid, and we use the Prius, the most popular hybrid in that calculation. And it's 4 cents for, for the Nissan LEAF. So obviously, there's a clear, um, clear advantage on fuel costs for electric vehicles here. And actually, this, that four cents is probably even lower, because even though the 12 cents represents the average price, most electricity companies have announced plans to discount power when customers use it to fuel their electric vehicle. And that's because they're going to be doing that off-peak or in the evening when, when electricity is, is available. So that four cents could even be lower depending on the electric utility. So it sounds like a good story for a quick and easy adoption. Well, from what we know now, we doubt that there's going to be mass adoption uh, and that, that the projections are for fairly modest penetration, at least through 2015. The Obama administration has said that its goal is to see a million electric vehicles on the road by that year. We think that's probably a bit aggressive. There's two really big things holding up um, adoption, and one is you know, cheap fuel, expensive car. That's fundamentally the premise right now. Um, the sticker price of the, um, the Volt is about $41,000, and the, the Leaf is about $33,000. Now, there is a federal um, tax credit available for both of these models to the tune of $7,500. So that does take the edge off a bit. But really, we're going to have to see um, continued drops in lithium-ion battery to really see um, meaningful change in that sticker price. And that sticker price is a major issue. The other issue is what people refer to in the industry as range anxiety. And that's just the issue that if you look at the LEAF, it can travel about 100 miles before you have to recharge. Now, um, a study has shown that for most Americans, 70% of Americans, in fact, um, drive an average daily, um, a d the daily number of miles of 40 miles or less. So 
Actually, range anxiety may be more of an anxiety issue than it is a practical problem, but these cars are not going to be adopted by everybody because not everybody has that kind of driving profile. And the other important thing is that there's no real mass infrastructure. I mean, you can fill up at the pump almost, almost anywhere, but you can't fill up your, electric, your electric vehicle except for at your home. For that, you have to install a charging station. And that, and that gets to maybe the, the, the last question that we'll d deal with today, and that is what are the implications for the, for the grid? You know, what does is, what is, what is, uh, the adoption of the, elect of the electric vehicle mean for um, the electric industry? We're looking at that now, and we're going to be um, publishing a series of articles likely this summer. It's a, it's a big issue. There's a lot of things that w uh, about electric vehicles that will impact utilities. So look for more updates later. But, you know, the snapshot is that uh, we're not really sure who's going to establish this infrastructure. There's a business case in, for utilities that don't have decoupling for maybe them to get involved in it. But it could equally be, you know, third-party vendors that do this or even um, competitive merchant generators like NRG has set, expressed an interest in electric vehicles. So the business case is not really clear for electric utilities now. The reliability case, which a lot of people are talking about and there are issues, is probably a manageable one because the adoption rate is going to be at least initially reasonable. I mean, if you think about what electric utilities have to do fundamentally, they have to plan for load growth. And electric vehicles are just one other source of load growth. So we think at least initially the issues for electric utilities will not be major and they'll be absorbable. That's not to say that there aren't issues. And most of those issues are going to be in the distribution network and whether if you have cluster adoption, that is large you know, numbers of neighborhoods adopting, whether you have to beef up the local distribution system. And we'll have to leave it there for now. Thanks a lot, and thank you for tuning in.